So today I want to talk about what's different between the ketogenic diet and intermittent fasting as far as their benefits, okay? They're not actually the same. Let's start with keto. So when you drop your carbs, you produce ketones from fat. When you do intermittent fasting, well, guess what? You're dropping your carbs, so you're also going to produce ketones, but you're also doing something else. You're not stimulating a hormone in your small intestine called the GIP hormone, which will increase ketones even more because when you eat, you do trigger this GIP hormone and that increases insulin. So when you do intermittent fasting, you're going to produce more ketones than you would if you're just doing the ketogenic diet. And this is because of the combination of not doing carbs and not stimulating that extra insulin. All right, let's talk about cancer. Cancer lives on glucose and glutamine. That's an amino acid. So when you do keto, you actually starve the cancer cell of glucose. And the tumor cells cannot live on ketones. So that's good, right? But here's the problem. Cancer can also live on glutamine. But doing intermittent fasting or periodic prolonged fasting can lessen the amount of glutamine that that cancer can live on. So you're basically starving the cancer cell. All right, next difference is when you do keto, hopefully you're doing the healthy version of keto. You're not doing the dirty keto, okay? You're providing nutrients, essential trace minerals, vitamins, minerals, uh, building blocks like uh, amino acids, essential fatty acids to build the body. With intermittent fasting, you're not eating, so basically you're not providing nutrients. Now, it is true, when you do intermittent fasting, you're recycling these nutrients more and the need for them goes way down, but intermittent fasting itself does not provide any nutrients. It does, by the way, increase more antioxidants, which is another benefit. All right, next one is something called autophagy. Autophagy is a condition where your body is recycling old damaged proteins, okay? It's cleaning up all this old stuff and it's bringing it into a new state. So it's really important in repair. You're getting way more autophagy when you do intermittent fasting than when you're eating, okay? So for all practical purposes, you're really not getting any major autophagy when you're, even when you're doing low carbs, okay? But when you're doing intermittent fasting, you are. So that's one huge benefit. Uh, especially when you get into anti-aging. Now, in addition to that, you have something really cool that happens. There's actually longevity genes that get expressed or activated when you do fasting. So actually, you live longer when you do intermittent fasting. All right, the next one is you drop inflammation significantly. Now, with lowering your carb, you're also going to drop inflammation. But intermittent fasting, you're going to drop inflammation even more. And inflammation in general is really a a key thing in so many chronic illnesses, autoimmune diseases, all the arthritis, uh, diabetes, uh, neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, and even in atherosclerosis, which is uh, people think about the heart disease as just placking, but that placking starts after you get inflammation. And you get a lot of extra damage when there's inflammation in the body. And there's also a lot of inflammation in cancer as well. So dropping this inflammation is really a key factor. Next benefit with intermittent fasting is you get a massive spike in growth hormone. Now you also get a spike of growth hormone when you do low carb, but not near as much as when you do intermittent fasting. It could be between 1300 to up to 2000% more. And the last point, which I already mentioned, your body actually starts building up more of your antioxidant reserve. The antioxidants can come from your diet, but your body can also make them. So when you do intermittent fasting, you actually are uh, strengthening that system, which is really important in preventing damage to your genes, to the DNA, to the mitochondria. Okay, I wanna show you one more thing. Okay, let's talk about the brain for a second. Your brain, prefers ketones. If you have a damaged brain, let's say you have dementia, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, or you're starting to forget things. And by the way, Alzheimer's takes like 15 to 20 years to develop. So it starts off small and then it gradually gets worse. If you have any type of damage in your brain, 
you need to be aware of this fuel source ketones because your, your brain loves ketones and ketones can bypass the damaged nerve cells, which by the way, the damaged nerves are not getting the glucose and that's what's starving them. So you can bypass that whole thing and feed the neurons ketones and they can be very, very happy. So there's two things you need to know about this. Number one, it's the level of ketones in the blood that determine if the, what the brain is gonna use as fuel. If you have a lot of ketones in the blood, despite having even a lot of glucose in the blood, the brain will eat up these ketones in preference to the glucose. So that's good news, right? And then we also have the level of glucose in the blood. So let's say, for example, you go on the ketogenic diet and you cut down the glucose. Then your body will start making ketones, raise ketones, and your brain will be happy. But what happens when you consume too much glucose because you're in a high carb diet? Well, you're gonna run your brain on glucose. The problem is you're gonna have insulin resistance eventually, and the cells are not gonna get the fuel and then they're gonna die. So you're gonna starve off the brain cells when you do a high carb diet. And there's one last really important thing I wanna tell you. If you have brain damage, okay, and you start keto and intermittent fasting, and it's taking a while to adapt to ketosis, and you may not have the level of ketones that you really want. In this situation, I would highly recommend taking MCT oil, okay? That will provide a lot more ketones to jumpstart the engine. I would also recommend you take exogenous ketones. Now, I normally don't recommend those, but if you have Alzheimer's or Parkinson's, I would definitely recommend that because that would give you just more ketones to work with and satisfy the fuel part of the brain. Anyway, thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video. Hey, if you're liking this content, please subscribe now and I will actually keep you updated on future videos.